Hi, this is Toby from Lift Tech Mobility. So in today's video, we're going to touch on safety when using your electric folding wheelchair. Um, so the first thing we need to think about is the right chair for the right person. Um, this is the, probably the most important thing. So whether it's to do with your disability or to do with your height and weight, um, all of these things come into play massively. So let's say somebody came to us and they were 16 stone, they were female, um, and they wanted to go from their flat out into town. Um, but they're calling me up and they're saying, look, I want a, ca a carbon fiber chair or I'm wanting something like the LiftTech Compact. Um, straight away, we'd be recommending, because of the types of train that they'd be going to and encountering on the way to their journey, and also obviously because of their, their, their height, overall height and weight and dimensions, um, those chairs won't be suitable. Something you need to bear in mind um, and just want to put a little kind of asterisk here at this point. This is an educational video. Please do not take offence at anything I say um, throughout this vi uh, video. Nothing is meant to be taken as offensive, uh, taken offensively. Um, but you will have to remember it's just a fact of life, and this is, in the end of the day, this is to help you um, and your safety when using the wheelchair. So. The way a wheelchair reacts with different weights is completely different. So a, a, a very, very light weight wheelchair with a heavy weight person uh, in the wrong scenario with the wrong chair could be a recipe for disaster and borderline dangerous. So light chairs are amazing because you can pick them up much easier. You can put them into the boot of your car um, and it's, you know, they, they weigh next to nothing. But there's always going to be a compromise. The lighter the chair, the less capable they are. So when you're mixing someone who's maybe 15, 16, 17 stone with a chair that weighs, um, you know, 18 kilograms, the, the chair is going to move around with the user's weight a lot. It's going to stop much, much slower um, and it, it's going to react to cambers and things like that. It's also going to be incredibly bumpy, borderline dangerous when taking things like drop curbs. Um, say someone comes to me and we've got, they've got um, Parkinson's disease and they're very shaky. Um, we might want to give them maybe a compact if they were using the chair inside the house uh, because it's a very gentle ride, um, it's very, very steady. If they want to go for something a bit more capable, we may want to recommend something like a Smart Chair X because uh, it's very comfortable, it's obviously amazing outdoors at tackling different terrain types. But what we probably recommend is we maybe tone down the joystick. So most of our chairs, probably about 8 out of the 11 models, we can completely um, program the joystick. That means we can change the way the chair accelerates, we can change the top speeds, things like that, stopping time. Um, so what this means is, um, if say someone's got lots of jitters or something like that, or they've got a nervous disposition, what we would do is we'd plug in our program and we'd reduce the um, acceleration right, right down, maybe the top speed slightly, and that takes away the kind of instant punchiness. Some people will even say, when they're not used to wheelchairs, electric body wheelchairs, that it's even a bit jerky, because electric power is very instant. Um, so what we do is we take away that kind of punchiness so it makes it much more of a gradual takeoff. This means using it around the home, for example, is going to be much, much easier um, and you're going to feel in much more control. Um, obviously, if someone's very small, um, they might have dwarfism or they might be a child or they might just be quite small. We want a chair that's going to be completely telescopic or adjustable. So adjustable foot plates, maybe adjustable backrest. Um, a lot of our chairs even have the uh, telescopic backrest, which means, say you've got a rounded spine or something like that, and the back top of the back bar can dicks into your shoulders, we can adjust that back bar so it then sticks across the shoulder blades, so it's only your back that's sitting into the cushion bit. So it's our job as professionals um, and specialists in this industry, so when you call up, we will answer all of your questions, but we, more importantly, we will ask you questions about your lifestyle, about your disabilities, so we can then fit you in the right chair um, for your own needs because that is the most important thing. Even when people order straight off, uh, off the internet and online without speaking to us first, we always, 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 before we process any of the orders or make it up, we will call you first. And I would probably say three times out of ten, we will change the wheelchair choice of the individual totally because they maybe ordered a compact when really they should be going for a Smart Chair 1 or a Smart Chair X or something and we make them see why what they've ordered is not going to be suitable and when they get it, they're going to be spending two thousand pounds, and they're going to be quite unhappy. So sometimes it's better a bit of set of ramps and a more capable chair, and you still end up with um, the same result as getting a lighter chair and putting it into the boot car. Except you'll be much happier, and it will actually suit your needs. Okay, so safety when taking curbs, cambers, and hills. 
So these are probably the three most dangerous things you'll come across um, if you don't um, encounter them and do them correctly. So curbs, um, so you have to bear in mind electric folding wheelchairs, wheels, they're not big. So say an average curb is that size, you, your front wheel needs to be a minimum of double the size of the curb to go up a half curb, for example. So a standard curb, you would go, sorry, a standard size front wheel will only go up a dropped or quarter curb forward. Um, if you want to go up anything more like a half curb, you simply have to swing the chair around and reverse up it. Because if you think a standard front wheel will stay that big, your curb's that big, that's obviously the same size as the curb, you're just going to bounce off it. It's just not, it's not physically possible. Um, so, although our chairs are very capable, you have to bear in mind that everything has its own limitations and capability cutoff points. Um, so we take up drop curbs and quarter curbs forward, we reverse up uh, curbs backwards. This is something else which comes into play. So say someone wants to use their wheelchair predominantly outdoors, but they've gone and ordered a, um, a chair that has anti-tip bars. Anti-tip bars, this is the reason why we don't put them on most of our chairs, because the centre of the gravity and the weight of the chairs is such that it's in the middle, chairs are heavy so you would literally be having to gun it some up a very steep hill and hit a bump for you to be able to tip these chairs backwards. What anti-tip bars do is they reduce your ground clearance from about that much to about that much so we're talking inches to centimetres that means you can no longer reverse up your curves backwards so you say you're going from your flat and you don't own a car and your one mode of transport is your chair you gotta go from your flat down your high street into town you're going to be coming across horrible canvas, curves, hills, all of these three bad no-nos and you're going to get stuck if you've got a wheelchair that can't um, tackle these things. So if you are in that situation where you don't have a car, you need it as your form of main form of transport to get out to the shops and out and about, we'd recommend a Smart Chair X pretty much every time or maybe an XXL if you're a larger individual because you are going to be wanting the most comfortable, capable chair there is to tackle all of England's pretty crappy roads, let's face it, and pavements. Um, Cambers. Okay, so Cambers is probably the electric folding wheelchair's worst enemy. So the mechanics of an electric folding wheelchair, it's got the big wheel at the back, that's how the wheelchair drives from. At the front it's got a smaller wheel, that's how the wheelchair moves. So say I was to lift the wheelchair up, slap your front wheel, a bit like a supermarket trolley, it's going to spin around and round. What that means is when I'm on the spot, means it allows me to spin on my own axis, which makes it amazing for using inside the house, shopping centres, restaurants, bars, places where you've got minimal room. Um, but what it does mean is when you run things with a sideward slope, because you've got those front independent wheels, if you don't hold a steady pace, your front wheels are going to want to drift in the camber. And whether you've got a £10,000 electric wheelchair, whether you've got a £1,000 wheelchair, they will move to some extent. Obviously, the more you pay for wheelchair and the better quality it is, the less you're going to move around. But and also the bigger wheels, uh, the better quality wheels and tyres, the less you're going to move around with cambers. But you will, it's just a fact. It's one of those things you can't... You can't expect to have a 25 kilogram wheelchair and there not be some sort of downsides. And the downsides to lightweight and folding electric wheelchairs is they will move around ever so slightly. But that's up to us again to um, get you the right chair for the job for your specific needs. You also need to bear in mind that, and this we touched on this a little bit earlier about the right chair for the right person, if you've got something like a carbon edition and someone is in it who shouldn't be in it, who's rather overweight, because of the weight of them, with the, such, with the light chairs plus the really small wheels and the carbon fibre uh, or the compact, you are going to move around a lot. So any kind of, even small, small camber, you're going to move because the weight of you is pushing that wheelchair out into the road or into the wherever street from the camber. So you need to bear that in mind. So that's why, I mean, like really anyone male or female that's over sort of 16 stone should be going for a smart chair and that's a bigger wheeled wheelchair. It's safer, you're going to be more comfortable, it's going to be more capable. You may, everyone wants the lightest thing, but light isn't always the best, um, the best solution. You're far better off going for a set of ramps um, and wheeling it in and out of the boot or electrically togging it in a folding position in up the ramps and into your boot um, and going for a more capable chair than you are for going <coughs> for a light chair any day. <coughs> right. <coughs> Hills. So always, always approach a downslope of a hill head on. So say my hill is going this way, and this is me coming up to in the wheelchair. I want to stop at the top of the hill, put my speed level on speed level one, and then I want to slowly go down the hill. Never, ever, ever go down a hill in more than speed level one. Because what will happen is, the more higher up the speed you're going, even if you haven't got your toggle on full, your wheels are going to run much more freely. So it's a bit like going down a hill with your car, 
and you go through the gears, it's going to make, keep you much more controlled. It's the same principle. Uh, you can say a child has to run out front of your cat, or you've got little, uh, lots of pebble dash on a hill. You probably know when you've stopped too quickly, you can skid on those sort of things. So if you're in speed level one, uh, this is going to minimise skidding, it's going to make you stop quicker. Also, um, if you're taking on, say this is my slope again going that way, and I'm trying to take it on diagonal, you've got the same problem, it basically turns itself into a camber. So straight away, my front wheel is going to want to go, and I, can even, I would even, if I went down a real steep enough slope like this, um, go 180, no, 90 degrees into that slope. It's, that's how much it will turn you. Um, so always, always take slopes dead on. You have no issue whatsoever on any one of our chairs, especially any of the smart chairs, and the best at taking hills in our range are the smart chair 2 and the smart chair X. Going, you'll go up any concrete or pavemented hill the UK has to throw it, or even Scotland. I people, we sell chairs to Scotland every flipping day, and their main criteria is it needs to go up hills, we've got horrible terrain. Um, so yeah, it can, anything the UK has to throw at it, us on the wheelchairs, sorry, it can do. You must might have seen our videos on the website, and if you can go up a skate ramp, or we can go up a skate ramp, that means the chair can go up any hill, you know, in the UK, flat out. Um, so it's no big deal. Right, having your chair set up correctly for your disability. This is equally important. So we touched on this a bit earlier. So say you are of a very nervous disposition, so you're already worrying about using your wheelchair, about holding, how to manoeuvre the joystick. Maybe you've never even driven a car before. Uh, this is where we have to ask you all these sort of questions to ascertain what kind of person you are, what's going to suit your needs the best. Um, we can completely um, tailor make, uh, sorry, tailor make up your uh, joystick to your disabilities. So uh, we can program the acceleration right down, make the stopping time a bit quicker, um, those kind of things. Um, if you are a bit larger, uh, we can set up the the way the the back of the backrest comes down. So. In general, larger people tend to sit further back and they'll prefer to sit further back in their wheelchair. So what we would do with something like the Smart Chair 1 or the Smart Chair or Smart Chair 1XL and the Smart Chair XL is we'd actually take off the front cushion, the main cushion, we'd take off the L-shaped cushioning and what we'd do is we'd then position that final bit of cushioning further back which makes, once you put everything else back on, it makes the whole individual sit further back. That means they've got more of their legs being covered then by the main cushion, giving them far more support. Um, and you can also release, on all of our chairs, you not only can you have the backrest quite upright, but if you release the straps at the very back of the wheelchair, you can then sit more of a concave effect into it, which makes your back kind of seep into the back of the chair more. So some people find that more comfortable. So this is all stuff that we know. You don't necessarily know it, so it's up to us to ask you these questions so we can get you in the most comfortable seating position uh, with the best joystick up set up possible. Um, so... Please, please, please give us as much information when you do make your phone calls as possible um, because we can really change the whole way a chair is going to respond and react to you, for you. Okay, so using the wheelchair inside. Um, things you need to bear in mind, obviously stick to speed level one when you're inside because the faster you go, the slower you're going to stop. The last thing you want to do is start taking out bits of door frames, which we see every day. The amount of armrests we send out to people from where they've crashed into door frames is, you know, is unbelievable. But that's fine. So to protect your house and yourself, keep your elbows in when going through door frames. Also, what a lot of people don't understand, I see it all the time on demos, you don't need to put your hand flat out on the joystick. So say, say this is my joystick toggle. Most people that come into demos, they hold the joystick like that and they push it forward. Um, first of all, the best way of holding a joystick, and I say this time and time again, make a V shape with your hand and the crevice of the V you put in the bottom of the toggle and tilt your hand forward. And if you want to go to the right, you tilt your hand to the right. If you want to go to the left, you tilt your hand to the left. Do not hold it like that. Do not hold it like that. And do not hold it like that. You will have no control over it whatsoever. So what you can even do is when you're going through doors, you don't need to hold it the whole way down. So what you can do, and I call it pigeon stepping, get yourself lined up with your door, and rather than freaking yourself out by putting it, even in speed of one, flat to the floor, do little pigeon steps. You're going, stop, touch, 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 and you're literally edging through a doorway. Wait till you get your confidence up before you start like hurdling through your house. Um, so I'd say that that's probably the main thing. Just take everything slowly, take everything at your own pace. If you start to waver, especially going through doorways, and I see this time and time again, because these are quite sensitive joysticks and they need to be sensitive so you can do lots of quick manoeuvres. Um, and when you get good, honestly, the, the joysticks are your best friend. But to begin with, they can be a bit daunting. 
So what people do is they go through the doorway and they start going a bit right, so they slam the joystick over to the left and they swing left, and they slam the joystick over to the right and they swing right. And before you know it, they're literally in the doorstick going bouncing off walls, like doing a pendulum motion. The best thing to do is if you're just starting to feel unsteady, just take your hand off the joystick, compose yourself, because it's electromagnetic braking, the chairs will stop. Um, compose yourself and then line yourself back up very gently and start again. Last thing you want to be doing is overcompensating with the joystick from swinging it side to side. Just take a breather and start again. So that's probably the main tips I'd say for using a wheelchair inside. Also, be vigilant of what's around you, whether it be dogs, children, especially children, places like pubs, restaurants like that, there's, got, there's a lot going on around you. So take things slowly, be very careful of your surroundings or wary of your surroundings and operate the wheelchair accordingly. Last thing you want to do is be you know, involved in an accident with someone or something. Um, you don't want to scare yourself or put yourself off using the wheelchair because in the end of these day, in the end of the day, these wheelchairs are going to give you your freedom. Um, so the last thing you want to do is put yourself off using them because you've had a minor accident which could have been avoided. So use your eyes, use your ears, and just be steady in uh, built-up surroundings. Okay, using your wheelchair outside. So things you need to kind of watch out for again here are map out your journey. So if I'm going down a road to my local shops. And this side of the road, there's loads of drop curves, it's got loads of roads um, you know, coming in between the pavement you're on, so you're constantly having to go down curves, up curves, but, and it's got a horrible cam, there's tree roots, typical English road basically. Or the other side of the road, it's like a nice French style road, nice and open, or even a German road or whatever, no bumps, it's nice and flat, it's got a nice pavement for as long as the eye can see. Cross the road by all means, go to the side which is going to give you the most smoothest, safest, easiest journey. Don't make life difficult for yourself just because you're here. Think how much harder is my life going to be getting to the shops by going down the curbs, avoiding traffic, or is it harder for me just to cross the road and go down the other side of the road? It's probably much easier just to do that, to be honest. Um, and it's going to give you much more less headache and you're going to enjoy your journey, you can enjoy using the wheelchair, enjoy the freedom it gives you. Um, also, using your wheelchair outside. Um, cambers, again, you've got to watch out for, so mapping your journey comes into that. Hills. Um, Mm, what else for using your wheelchair outside? Obviously when you're taking them out to parks and things like that, avoid children and things like that again. You're going to come across um, in certain towns cobbles, so take cobbles at a slow to medium pace. Don't want to go careering through cobbles because the minute you go too fast through something like that and there's a slightly cobble that's just slightly too big or the one before it's got too much of a dent, if you've got a wheelchair that's not got the big 8 inch wheels like um, and most of them have got the 7 inch wheels, then you are going to get those wheelchairs stuck. And if you're going too fast, you could even like tip forward. So um, also weather conditions you need to think about. So if it's raining, your stopping time is going to be more because you may skid. So this is where exactly when the same scenario is with hills, um, you want to be in speed level one, speed level two, even on the flat surface, because if something's pull out of you and, you're and it's raining, the chance of you skidding are far, far greater. And obviously that leads us on to then like ice and even snow. We did actually have a gentleman send us in a video, and I think it's on the website, but I can't remember, it's certainly on YouTube. And he took his Smart Chair X out in the rain and the ice and snow and the ice last year. And actually was going perfectly fine along the standard uh, pavement. I was a bit worried, like, you know, that's not the, th it's, imagine he gets up to a big hill. Thing is, what people don't realise, you know, these are capable wheelchairs, but everything has their limitation. Say you were to break suddenly an electric wheelchair and it would be been icy and you're on a hill. I'm telling you now, even our chairs, which are really, really good, you're going to slide and you probably will probably end up in hospital, not going to lie. So really, really just be sensible about the conditions you're going out with. And if you do have to, because it's your legs, please just be sensible when using your wheelchair. So hopefully I've covered as much as I can think of on the top of my head whilst doing a video, which is much harder than it looks, by the way. Um, everything to do with safety. Um, just be vigilant about the style of person you are and don't... It's going to sound a bit harsh, but don't try and kid yourself. Like if you you know exactly your genetic makeup, you know exactly your disability, you know maybe how quickly your mind responds with your um, hand action loads, your motions. Get the right chair to suit all of those needs. Don't try and go for something which you know is which you want to have, but realistically isn't going to be suitable. Give yourself as much chance to get the right chair for you because. Honestly, the right chair equals freedom, and what is this all about? It's giving you decent quality of life, it's giving you freedom to do things. 
Um, your life, no one's life has to stop. Just keep going um, and enjoy the Lift Tech products, but do it in a safe manner. Thanks very much. I'll see you on the next video.